In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food, food in pure choice wines. On this mountain he will destroy the veil, the veils of all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. The second time he sent other servants saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we hear in the scriptures of this great feast that God wants to to give to us, and it is a feast that he has been preparing for us. It is the wedding feast of the Lamb, the Eucharist. We come Sunday after Sunday, and we celebrate the Eucharist, but sometimes we fail to appreciate what we are receiving, what we are celebrating. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son and sent him to die for our sins, and to be raised up to newness of life so that we might have an example of holiness of life and hope that we too, by the power of the Lord, can do all things through Jesus Christ and therefore can become saints and even great saints. And we receive those graces time and time again here as we receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Today, The church in Assisi, Italy, 
beatified a young man, a 15-year-old boy who had died of leukemia by the name of Carlo Acutis. Now, as a young boy, Carlo had a great love of the Eucharist. He asked his parents, and his mother especially, who did not go to church, for him to receive his First Communion. So he received First Communion, and then every week afterwards, he received Communion and went to confession. He fell in love with the Eucharist. At the age of 11, he decided that once he realized that other people didn't seem to love the Eucharist as much, he decided that he would put together a website with all of the Eucharistic miracles throughout the world, throughout the history of time, to show everybody what a great treasure we have in the Eucharist. One of those miracles was of a young boy of the age of seven years old who was completely paralyzed and mute, who received communion and was instantaneously healed. This was in La Rochelle, France in 1461. I happened to look up the website that's still available today that lists all of these miracles, and I happened to read that one, and I loved this example of a Eucharistic miracle. Sometimes we've heard of the host changing into the actual physical body or the actual physical blood of Jesus Christ. Instead, most of the time, we have this double miracle of the Eucharist where Jesus transubstantiates the Eucharist, that is, that is, he changes the substance of the Eucharist to become his body, blood, soul, and divinity while keeping it in a form that we can receive under the form of bread, under the form of wine, no longer being bread and wine, but instead being truly Jesus. I love the fact that the Lord will sometimes grace bomb us with these miracles to remind us what is present to us at every single Eucharist? Jesus, the healer. He is the healer. We don't have to wait, thanks be to God, for some person or group of people with the charism of healing because Jesus, the healer, is present. But we also want to remember what, what St. Paul said about Jesus, He said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We can do all things through Jesus who strengthens us. And that is why we have been recommended to receive frequent communion as frequently as possible. Of course, being in the state of grace after good confession. Carlo Acutis, blessed Carlo Acutis, used to say that the Eucharist is his superhighway to heaven. Because the Eucharist contains every grace that we need in order to become holy, in order to become saints. St. Thomas Aquinas, our patron, once said that with every holy communion, the person who receives, receives all of the graces that are possible to receive, but yet somehow what happens, he says, is this, that for some reason, some of the graces, though they are technically received, they're not activated for some reason. That though the grace is present to us, we haven't yet been open to all of them. And I think the key is this. What do we expect? What is our expectation at Mass? Do we have faith that this is Jesus, our Savior? Do we have faith that this is the one who will make us into saints? Not ourselves, not putting our faith in ourselves, not a political candidate, they're not going to save us, fill in the blank, whichever party, not reading enough, getting to know enough about our faith, though that will help sometimes, neither will doing certain works, though the practice of virtues will help us to be more disposed to growing from sin to virtue, those things in and of themselves will not save us. The one who saves us is Jesus. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is our Healer. He is God. He is our Lord. And so in this Eucharist today, we want to truly come and encounter Jesus. And if we haven't ever truly encountered him and his love, if we haven't encountered who this is, we can ask him today, Lord Jesus, 
your Father in heaven, our Father too, prepared this sacred banquet for us so that we might receive the fullness of graces that come from you in your body, blood, soul, and divinity. Jesus, we believe that when we receive you in communion, we receive the Father and the Holy Spirit, that we receive every good heavenly blessing. Jesus, we ask that you might strengthen our expectant faith, That is, that our hearts might be set on fire as we come into your presence and you come into us this day. Not just wanting us to be satisfied with seeing you in the Eucharist, not just wanting to be satisfied with just hearing about you by a priest who's going on too long, but instead to receive you into our very being, into our very body, into our very souls, into our spirits, that we may become more and more like you. Jesus, give us the same faith, an even greater faith in your presence in the Eucharist that blessed Carlo Acutis had, that we might too believe that the more receptions of communion that we have, the more we become like you, Jesus, the more you transform us into yourself. Because Jesus, we know that this banquet is for us And we are to receive from its fullness, but we know, Jesus, that we're also to give, to invite everyone else to come into that banquet. But first, they have to experience that banquet, Lord Jesus, through us. We ask that we might not only receive the fullness of the banquet today, but that we might overflow with the fullness of that banquet so that everyone who we come in contact with will know that there is something different about us. Something different because we have been touched by you, Jesus. We have received you, Jesus. We haven't just been given an apparition of you. We have actually come in contact with you. And we ask this all in your most holy name as we pray. Amen. With the universal church, we stand and proclaim our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's merciful and abundant love, for he has set a banquet before us in the sight of our enemies, let us make our requests known to him. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strength as we nurture a culture of healing in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people 
including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, may they know the healing power of Christ, who is our divine physician. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are here, may the Lord continue to help us speak the truth in charity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they find a place at the banquet of life in the eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, may the Holy Spirit inspire young men to prayerfully discern the priesthood and young men and women to prayerfully be open to the consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Lou Stagnone, for whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I ask that you might keep in your prayers today, Father Joe, whose birthday we celebrate today, that the Lord may bless him abundantly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray that we might see the miracles of the Eucharist in us, that God may touch us in a special way, and through us, others as well. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. As you watch over the lives of your people, hear the prayers we offer this day and answer them according to your will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, 
For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son, in the highest, O Son, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, in the highest, O Son, in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, blessed Carlo Acutis, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. mingling in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us and receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just want to invite you that uh, every time we receive communion, we want to be attentive to what we ask for in prayer, especially if we're praying for other people. The Lord Jesus can heal other people through our reception of the communion. He can also heal us. So I ask you too that when, notice I didn't say if, but when you see answers to these prayers, please let the office know so we can use these examples as a way to strengthen the faith of other people. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.